My first guest today was part of his country's golden generation of footballers. Uh, at one point in time, he was the most expensive football transfer in the world. And on a lighter note, he once had a decapitated pig's head thrown at him on a football field. My second guest is someone who played his entire career with just one club, which is rarity in, in football these days. And one of his former managers had this to say about him, which I'm going to read out. He said, he was like a cocker spaniel chasing a piece of silver in the wind. He, his feet never seemed to touch the ground. And that was the start of it all. Ryan Giggs, Luis Figo, an absolute, absolute pleasure for someone like me to have both of you all. I feel at this point like a little child in a toy shop and someone's giving me the keys and say, go and do what you want because you all are absolute legends of the game. Football is where you all have, of course, made your name, but we want to start with futsal, which is why you all are here. Uh, Luis, you were part of the sort of setup of the entire game in India. What was the feedback after season one that you got? Well, I think the feedback is really positive. Uh, it's always difficult to to start a new uh, concept, a new brand. Uh, but I think in the in the resume of the the first uh, season, is uh, really positive. Uh, we we got through some some issues, but I think that is normal in a, in a new project. Uh, but that help helps you to to get more experience, to get more mature, and to try uh, to do better in this second season uh, with the experience that we got in the first one. Ryan, you played. So obviously the feedback for you would have been slightly different from what came across to Figo. What was the experience for you like playing futsal, having played football all your life? Yeah, it was the first time I'd played futsal. So um, it was a challenge because it's very different from, from normal football. The ball is slightly smaller, heavier, so you have to kick it in a different way. So I had to learn a whole new skill set. But it was good. It was, it was challenging because you're against professional futsal players whose ability uh, is amazing. But it was, a, it was a great experience for me and um, one that I enjoyed. How different is season two going to be sort of from compared to last year? What can we expect new this year? Well, I think uh, more or less we try to, to, to have the same quality in terms of... Uh, of players, uh, we will uh, do the, some scouting uh, to try to uh, to see that we have more interest for part of the the Indian uh, commu uh, community. Uh, of course, the production will be uh, different, and uh, our goal is to uh, to be more known uh, around the world and. Uh, that uh, we can uh, increase the visibility that we had in the first season. Last year we had Cafu, Giggs, Scholes, Ronaldinho, Crespo part of the league. Are we expecting some more big names this year as well? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, some of the, the professional legends uh, will repeat and the other ones, uh, they coming new ones, new names. So. Uh, but I think the level and the quality will be more or less the same or better. You know? Futsal as, as a game is, is relatively new in India. Uh, football as itself, which is the world's most popular sport, has at times struggled to make sort of a foothold. Uh, what is futsal going to do differently than the game of football here? That it's going to attract more people? Well, I think it's more, perhaps more accessible to play. Um, you don't need as many players, so you can have to any friends who can play because it's five a side more or less rather than trying to get 22, 24, 25 players like football um, and it's quick, it's, it's quick, it's different, it's thinking on your feet tactically it's, it's different also, it's a bit more like basketball tactically and also every, every young player wants to see skills, every young player wants to express themselves and wants to see the likes of Ronaldo, Messi and all the skills that they, they perform. And this is something that the professional futsal players especially are very good at. I want to move a little bit from futsal to football and I want to start with you Luis because you've played the World Cup. Infantino wants to increase the teams from 32 to 48. It's already crowded from the 2026 edition. It's already crowded. Does it fe is it feasible? Does it work to have a 48 team World Cup? Well, I think first of all, uh is the decision of the, the Congress. No? Uh, if all the associations are, agree with that uh, change, I think uh, is what makes the democracy. No? Uh, 
In my manifesto, in the time that I ran for presidency, I proposed already that in another, another uh, model. Uh, I think it will be better uh, in one side for football because going to give the chance and uh, the spot for the confederations to have more possibilities to, to play a World Cup. What I don't know and uh, is what we have to, to see if the quality of the World Cup uh, decreases or, or not. So that is my doubt. But in terms of uh, possibility for, for the teams that not used to play a World Cup, uh, I think it will be higher. And uh, uh, with that, uh, 48 teams probably will increase uh, the funds that you can get. Uh, and with that, you will uh, again uh, put that funds uh, in football and in development of football. So uh, let's see what, what's going to happen. Okay. You both have a strong connection with someone like Jose Mirini. He's a fellow Portuguese. He was your former coach at Inter Milan. And he's a good friend of yours. You played against him, Chelsea, Inter Milan, Real Madrid. Is he still the special one? Does he still have that sort of the ability to, to turn things around at United? Well, he's proved over and over again he's a top manager. He's a manager who um, is one of the best of his generation, won so much. And especially in the last three or four months, he's, um, he's turned things around at United. The difficult thing this season is there's six top, top teams, really. Whereas last year, all the top teams um, didn't perform. And Leicester, obviously, deservedly so, won the Premier League. This year is completely different. Man United, City, Arsenal, um, Tottenham, Chelsea, they're all, Liverpool, they're all on fire this year in regards to that they're at the top. So <clears throat> it's a difficult season for the top. Chelsea are going to win the league, but then there are three places left for five teams. So two big teams are going to miss out and two big, big managers are going to miss out. Miss out. Uh, Mourinho, you, when he first came to England in 2005, or 2004, sorry, be, was, was the self-proclaimed special one. He seems to have calmed down. Has his demeanor changed? Has he realized that because he's, I mean, with all due respect to Chelsea and even sort of Inter Milan, Manchester United is not just a club. It's now like a global sort of identity. Uh, does he realize that, he, I think, he, does he feel that, that the pressure of closing such a big club? Well, I don't know. I don't follow <laughs> so much what's happening in uh, daily, you know, but Knowing him well, I think he didn't change. Uh, I know, we're saying that Manchester United, of course, is global, but uh, Inter Milan and Chelsea they are global too. Uh, probably uh, with the age, you are more uh, calm. Probably is, is that, but uh, I don't think that uh, he changed it in terms of uh, wants to win, uh, the capacity of like manager, I think is continue the same. Coming back, staying with United, Paul Pogba is coming for a fair bit of criticism. Do you believe the criticism is justified or it was always going to happen because there was such a huge price tag involved? Yeah, I think it's, if you take the, the price tag out of the equation, he's done okay. I don't think he's done bad, I don't think he's set the world alight. But he's, he's 23, he's a centre midfielder. There, there isn't many midfielders, I'm talking world-class midfielders, Xavi, Scholes, Gerrard, all these players who were top midfielders at 23, were they controlling every game throughout a season? Probably not. And we've seen glimpses of what he's, he's capable of. He scored seven or eight goals. There's still a long way to go. So he's doing okay. But then when you add the, the most expensive player, the pressure, Everyone, he's 90 million, he must do more. Well, yeah, he didn't pay the price. You know, he, he's not in control of that. All he can do is get better and better. And I, I think he will get better and better. Um, and I think eventually he'll be a very good, very good player for Man United. Luis, you know a thing or two about price tags. I mean, you were at one time the world's most expensive football transfer. Do you see that record now just being broken every summer? Because we're now talking about, we're, we're close to about 100 million. And there's talk of 150 million, there's talk of 200 million. How does a player and a club sort of at the end of the day justify paying that kind of money? I mean, how do you sort of get the returns when you pay 100 million to a player? You don't get returns, it's impossible. For me, it's like a business model is 
have to come economists to explain how you get the return. <laughs> For me, it's impossible. But uh, it's like Ryan said, uh, it's not in control of the players, it's the market. And you cannot do nothing uh, if it's a club that is sailing and the other one wants to buy. So I think it's very, very impossible to control that. Uh, if it's not a regulated market, everything can happen. No? What's your take on this whole China Super League angle? They're throwing in money left, right and centre. They're willing to pay 600, 700,000 pounds a week because they, at some point they're looking to qualify for the World Cup. They want to host the World Cup. Is that good for football? Well, like I said to you, it's, for me, it's like uh, build the house for the, from the roof. Uh, it's, no, it's no sense, but uh, it's the market. If you have the money, you want to spend it, no one can control. So I think it's better to, to start uh, from the grassroots, invest in schools, academies, good coaches, infrastructures that don't, doesn't exist in, in, in China. And instead of uh, paying millions for probably players that are going to be there two or three years, and then that's it. But it's like the decision who, who is in the hands of the, who can, the person who can do that. And we just can give our, our opinion. No? United have spent a lot in the summer, but they're nowhere close to Champions League qualification. They can't afford to miss out on Champions League for another season at this point, can they? I don't think they're nowhere near Champions League qualification, you know, what are they, three points behind fourth place or something like that. So it's a big um, last third of the season. Um, they have two chances, they can either finish in the top four or win the Europa League. Europa League is a tough competition to win, but with Jose Mourinho, he's won in Europe before, they're quite capable, but yeah, they're not where they would want to be, Manchester United, definitely. But I think... If you would have asked a Man United fan at the beginning of the season, after what's happened previously, winning a trophy, which they have done, and top four, four then that's something to build on, and next year then go for the title. Lewis, I want to apologise at this point. I know I'm asking a lot of United questions because I'm the, a lifelong United fan, so I'm going to ask you about your no, favourite topic. I would topic. love to re answer you well, but <laughs> it's not... <laughs> no, I can understand. I, I, I'm going to switch to something more familiar with you. Your former teammate, Zinedine Zidane, is doing pretty well as a Real Madrid coach. Uh, did you think in your playing days that this was something he, would, he could have done and, and win a Champions League in his first season in six months in charge of Real Madrid? Well, I think he's doing amazing, not well. Uh, no, when uh, when we play together, when we teammates, never saw that he he, he had this uh, career, no, uh, being being a coach. But uh, sometimes you have some surprises, and it's the thing that he likes to do. And uh, I think until now he's doing uh, amazing, no. Speaking of coaches, Barcelona is on the lookout for a coach at the end of the season. Any few gentlemen interested? <laughs> No, Ryan has the license. I don't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ryan, I, I'm going to come back. But difficult for you to leave United. You were at a club that you were associated from the age of 14. How, how, what went through your mind when you had to sort of take that decision? No, it wasn't a difficult decision, if I'm honest. Um, it was just like when I finished playing, I was just ready, ready to go. And um, being a coach is completely different. And it was, um, it was hard work. It was pressure for them two years that I was a coach under Louis and it was a brilliant experience for me um, learning under such a fantastic coach uh, for, for me personally but then when I left um, I've enjoyed so much this year you know doing things that I, I wasn't able to do watch my son play football at the weekend do a bit of traveling do something different at Christmas because at Christmas mm -hmm. in the Premier League is always a difficult time so it's been really good and I've, I've really enjoyed it um, what happens next, I don't know, but at the moment, no, I'm enjoying life. Since 1990, no club has managed to win back-to-back -back Champions League titles. Can Madrid finally do it this year and sort of, will they now win a, a duodecimo? Have I got the pronunciation right? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I think right now they can because they are in quarter-finals, so they have the options to, to achieve the final, but uh, I don't know. It's another teams that are strong in the in, in the quarterfinals too, so we have to, to wait and see. Two defeats in a week, is, is, is this sort of the one of the most tightest La Liga races you've seen in recent times? Because they've had, they still have a game in hand, but it's get, Barcelona now really sort of catching up, aren't they? 
Well, it's competitive. I think uh, until the end, uh, they're gonna fight for for win the title. Uh, it's a few teams that can have the chance to win. So, in the last years, it's always between Barcelona and Real Madrid, and uh, I think this year will be the same. Wayne Rooney, big question in the summer: stay in England, China, Major League Soccer. What would you advise him if he ever came to you? Um, I don't know about giving advice. It's whatever makes Wayne happy. I mean, you know, he's broke the English goal-scoring record. He's broke the Man United goal-scoring record. So he's achieved a lot. But in football terms, is he old? Not really. He's 30, 31. So he's still got a lot to offer. And it's, it's just whether he wants a new challenge. Obviously, there are different... Um, different options out there now, obviously with China and the money, America, lifestyle, um, or stay in the Premier League, um, stay at United. There are, there are so many options for him. It's just what Wayne wants for his last few years in football, what's going to make him happy, what's going to make him competitive, what, what does he want to do, um, what does he want to look back on his career and, and say, you know, I've achieved so much. You turn entrepreneur quite early once your sort of career, and you were part of something called the A1 Grand Prix. Ryan's now got become an entrepreneur. He owns a football club. He's got his hotel. Any advice on how to be a business manager? Well, I, I think business is like a, a mix of uh, what you like to, to do, which area you want to be, and uh, some feeling about uh, what's, what can happen or the partners you can have. Uh, no advice because uh, if I if I knew uh, which will be the next step for F success, I will tell him. But <laughs> I don't know, so it's difficult. I don't want to tell him something and then uh, that went wrong. No. So how's it been being an entrepreneur, owning a football club? There's hotel football, which is prime location opposite Old Trafford. <laughs> Nice. No, it's, it's interesting. It's, I mean, there's a lot of similarities to football. You know, you want to be the best. You want to have a good team around you. Um, the the football club that we own, Salford City, that's interesting because it's it's back to grassroots. It's lower tier, but we're ambitious. We want to get to the football league, so that's good. I mean, and I'm involved with you know ex-teammates Gary Neville, Paul Scholes, Nicky Butt, Phil Neville. So it's good. It's good when we all get together and we talk about the club. Um, but yeah, business is tough, you know, turnover of staff, think, different things that you have to um, think about, but it's just all about getting the right team in place and, and delegating.